Hi. We will be talking about uh, my wonderful story about my first tiny patch on PostgreSQL. Who am I? I'm Leticia. Uh, it's sometimes difficult for uh, not French people to say it, so I'm okay with uh, any pro pronunciation. I don't care. Uh, I'm a PostgreSQL uh, advisor and trainer. I first encountered PostgreSQL uh, more than 10 years ago, and uh, I became a DBA with PostgreSQL first. And uh, at that time, my company uh, had decided that DBAs had to work with three technologies. So after, I had to work with Oracle and SQL Server 2. Uh, it was really great because uh, that company was a host, a hoster, so we had a lot of clients and we had a lot of constraints and we had a lot of uh, demands as high availability, security, we had medical data, we had high loads and we had a lot of uh, phone calls at 2 a.m. So uh, we had a, a, a lot of fun. Uh, but three years after, uh, I decided that uh, uh, I, I had seen enough and I changed company for an insurance uh, company and there they had Oracle, SQL Server and DB2. So that's the first time I encountered DB2 and I worked with DB2 uh, on mainframe and DB2 on AS400 and DB2 UDB. And I don't want to do it again. Uh, and uh, after that, I chose uh, to try uh, project management for one or two years. And I decided that it was way more complicated to deal with project management than with technical. Because in techni uh, when you're working with a technical issue, you know you will find an answer was when you're trying to manage a project, you will encounter people issue, and you know sometimes whatever effort you can make, you can't solve people issue. So that's why I decided to come back uh, into technique, and I choose PostgreSQL, because it's the best, of course. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, and uh, you can uh, also send me private messages. Private messages are, are open. I work for Luxodata. Luxodata is a French company uh, that we built on three pillars. Of course, the first one is PostgreSQL because it's our field of expertise. Uh, the founder of, uh, of Luxodata is Stefan Schilneck. He founded the French association uh, user uh, of PostgreSQL in, uh, in France. Then uh, we have DevOps because we want information to flow uh, freely across the dev world and the ops world, and it's really, really important. And then we work with the cloud because we had some customers that wanted to go into the cloud because it was so uh, the new thing and so fancy and uh, it will solve every problem. And so we had to advise them the, about uh, controlling your data, controlling what they were sharing, and so on. So what this talk is about. Uh, who's already contributing to PostgreSQL here? OK. So you're wrong, because everyone in this room is contributing. You just don't know. So we will see how. First, the Postgres community. This picture was taken uh, here in Ottawa in 2006. You should be able uh, to recognize some faces here, just a little bit older, but uh, you will see some people here. Uh, the Postgres community is really, really a welcoming community. Uh, it's shaped with a different uh, group of people, and so I made a map, but uh, as in every uh, map, it's a simplification. So just keep in mind that one people can be in more than one category. 
there, there will be categories, but of course, one people can be in all categories. The first category is the core team. The core team is a five members team. I think they are all here. Uh, they are totally independent. They are, they are not from the same company because no one owns PostgreSQL. And they act as project manager. Uh, that is, if there is a discussion on a community that long for, uh, lasts for too long, they will be here, they, they to say, okay, this conversation uh, can't end, so we choose that. But it's pretty rare. Last time they have to do it, they had to do it was more than 10 years ago, and it was about PostgreSQL name. So it's pretty rare. After that, we have commuters. Uh, committers are between the core team and other people. It's a team of more or less 15 persons, and they have git push permission. So they are responsible for, go for code quality. I, I like to think as committers are upgraded developers. They still write code, of course. They just have more power. And we all know that with great powers came great responsibility. Then we have developers. I've written developers, but it should be patchers because you can write patch without knowing how to write C code. Patches are not about C code, uh, all about C code. Of course, most of them are, but not everyone, uh, every one of them. So uh, PostgreSQL is written in C code, C for performance, and it's the cleaner and neater code I've ever seen in my life. There are so much comments. Uh, it's, it's so uh, well written, well explained, that it's a pleasure to read it. Uh, when uh, you write a patch for PostgreSQL, you need to comply with the style guide. So we have uh, clean and neat code. And I've heard that even for error messages, there is a style guide. Uh, and you need to comment your code, of course. And developers are asked to write documentation for their feature or their <laughs> modification so that the same person and the same brain can explain what he or she wanted to do. About the comment, uh, I was discussing with a patcher the other day, and he told me it was the first time he was asked to write three lines of comment for a simple if statement. And uh, he contributes a lot with other community, and it was really, uh, he was really amazed uh, how the process is well done and well written, and how uh, you're obliged to comply to the style guide so the, the code stays clean. Then we have reviewers. Uh, of course, first we know that developers will write better code if they know that it will be read by someone else. That's the first reason. Second reason is uh, because it improves code to be reviewed. Uh, it helps committers because committers are only 15 people. They can't read uh, all patches and be sure it's uh, okay with the style guide and so on. You don't need to be a dev to be a reviewer because as in a any languages, it's easier to read than to write. So, of course, you need to be able to understand code, but you don't need to uh, really uh, be able to write it, to read it. And you need a technical background about uh, LDBMS and so on, of course. Keep in mind that if there's something you don't understand in the code, it means that there are other people in the world that won't understand it at all. So it needs refactoring. And we have translators. Translators help the project to spread around, around the world. Of course, you need some technical basis to be explained to, uh, to be able to translate some explanation about PITR, 
for example. Uh, but being a translator is a great way to improve your, your, your knowledge because you have to read <laughs> to be able to translate. And of course, there's no need to be a, a, a developer to do that. And what you can translate is, uh, uh, of course, software messages. Software messages need trans translation, but there's also documentation and other stuff as uh, press releases and so on. Then, on the other side, we had advocacy. So uh, we are in the world where you can have the best product at all. If there's no advertising, people won't know and it won't be used. That's why the PostgreSQL community needs the advocacy group. Uh, the advocacy group uh, helps uh, write blog posts, uh, goes to events with uh, have booths, PostgreSQL booths in conferences or events and make some announcements about new releases uh, and help with uh, media relationships. Uh, it promotes PostgreSQL use and it shares information about PostgreSQL. Uh, this advocacy group is supported by association there are two that are listed in the postgreSQL.org uh, website. The first one is PGConf Europe, and the second one is uh, uh, PostgreSQL US. You should consider joining those associations. The fees are quite cheap, as it's 15 euros for two years in Europe, and it's a little more expensive in US. It's $25 for one year but I'm sure you can afford it, and it really helps. And then we have user groups. So uh, I made a little map of user groups. So uh, what's brown is where you have a local user group. And the tiny blue elephants are meetups. My map is old because I made it only on January, on January. And since I've seen that uh, some meetups uh, that were created, and, uh, but it, it's a, a good view of how it works. So uh, if uh, there is no uh, meetup near uh, your town, of, or if there is no user association in your country, you're welcome to create one. It's not that complicated. And you will find that other people are uh, interested in that topic. Uh, but why do you need to meet other Postgres user? It's really important because, yeah, you can go uh, find a conf talk, you can learn things that way, but to, to me, the more important in events and meetups and so on is meeting people and networking and so that you can explain your problems and have others' point of view and sometimes even just by explaining your problem you will find the solution and you will hear other people talking about their problem, their production problem and that way maybe one day you will encounter the same situation and you will have solutions. So it's really important to me in a uh, in an, as an IT uh, professional to have that trust network, that uh, network of people I can ask around, uh, ask around questions. And, but it's only my view and uh, I'd be uh, really happy if you, if you challenge it. Uh, and uh, I, I can meet you any moment uh, during the conference if you, have, uh, uh, if you disagree with that. To me, users are in the community. I'm not saying they're contributing, they're, but they're part of the community. And then, I don't know how you could use Postgres and not fall in love. The PostgreSQL project. Uh, there are uh, 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 
a lot of Git repositories in the PostgreSQL project. So I tried to make uh, another map where it shows uh, some categories of repositories. And what I tried to do is the bigger the box, the more likely you clone that repository. So the first one that's very big is PostgreSQL. If you haven't cloned the PostgreSQL project, do it. It's easy and you will be really amazed. And I'm quite jealous because I, I can't have that uh, feeling again. Translations, if you want to correct a typo in your language or something, you, you, should, uh, uh, you should clone that repository too. There are some contrips and tools that have separate uh, uh, repositories. Some are very, very old, as uh, it still is uh, repositories for Bucardo and Sloney, for example. But it's there, and uh, maybe you might need it. Some other tools or contrips have their own repository outside of PostgreSQL.org. I don't think you're likely to clone that one. That one is about uh, project management, uh, the maintenance stuff, commit fest uh, website, git repo itself, and so on. I don't think you'll need it. There are uh, what I call packages. Packages is a broad vision of packages. In packages, I put Windows installer and Linux distrib packages as RPM and uh, APT. And then it's, there's a whole repository for communication about mailing lists, websites, and so on. How PostgreSQL works uh, with releases? It's quite simple. It's one major release per year and one major, minor release per quarter minimum. That is, if there is an imported bug or a security failure, there will be more than one minor release per quarter. Uh, I'm sure you know the difference between major release and minor release. You, for minor release, you just have to change the binaries. For major release, you need to use a tool to upgrade your, da to upgrade your data. Uh, that kind of roadmap is so efficient that, that Oracle decided to use it now. So. If even they think it's better, I, I think we really have the good thing. Commit Fest, so the Commit Fest uh, holds five times a year. It's a month long period when we say to developer, okay, we need to review what has been written. Uh, if you've written a patch, you need to register your patch to the code meet fest. It's not automatic. And then you, sh you will have feedbacks from reviewers and maybe you will have some corrections to, to do. At the end of the commit fest, a lot of patches are committed to the next minor or major, major version. You will, fin you will find a uh, all the information you need on commitfets.postgresql.org. Tools, so PostgreSQL is also about tools. There are some websites, I'm sure you know the postgresql.org website and the wiki pages and the documentation. Uh, maybe you don't know about the planet.postgresql.org it's about a blog post when you, where you can find a lot of information. And don't forget to go to associations and local user group websites. You will, film, you will find other information there. So, how to contact PostgreSQL? PostgreSQL works with mailing lists. Mailing lists are stable and uh, have, uh, have no owner, so uh, you, it's not like a tool where you, you don't know uh, if, you, if you will depend on a manufacturer or not. 
with mailing list, you, uh, you won't have that. There is a form for bug submission, so you're not, uh, you will find uh, bug the, your bug submission in the mailing list, but uh, use the form if you want to submit a bug. Uh, if you're a newcomer, there, there is a PG SQL novice where you can ask any question. There is no silly question and no one will make fun of you. Uh, there are special lists for associations and local groups. And, of course, there is a PG SQL hackers mailing list. Just be careful because these guys are so chatty. There are so many mails. I don't think there is one human on Earth that can read each and every mail uh, on that list. I'm, not, uh, I, I'm sure it doesn't exist. Uh, when I mean read, it's really read and understanding in depth. Uh, I don't think it's possible. But it, it's a great mailing list. Just some tips about mailing list in PostgreSQL. Uh, we use inline reply. So you, we don't uh, do top replying or bottom replying. We prefer inline reply so it's better understandable. Uh, you have to reply to all. If someone uh, do a reply, you, ju you don't just reply to that person. We want it to be public, so you have to reply to all. And uh, the last thing is be respectful, but who needs that reminder? If you have a security issue, don't post it on public mailing list, or you're creating a zero day. So uh, there is uh, a special uh, email address, security at postgresql.org, just send it there. I have uh, last time I checked, there were more than 1,000 people connected on IRC uh, and waiting for your question. What's really great with IRC is there is no history. So if you're ashamed because your question was uh, not at your <laughs> top level, you don't care because you just let time go and there is no history. No one will know after 15 minutes or so. Uh, don't be afraid to ask anything. If uh, people are not interested in your question, in your question or think it's not uh, a question uh, really accurate, they just won't answer and you will find others that will help you. So you can find IRC on irc.freenode.net and the channel is uh, Sharp PostgreSQL. We're on Twitter too. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's quite new. Uh, it's, uh, it helps to stay in touch uh, uh, with other PostgreSQL users and uh, the community account is at PostgreSQL. There are other ways to stay in touch with the PostgreSQL community. There is a PostgreSQL Slack well, where you can ask questions and so on. There is a PostgreSQL Hangout too. And you can find help in forum as uh, Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, and so on. Git. So if you're like me, when you hear that, you freak out. But they have no reason to freak out. Uh, my colleagues used to say that my uh, knowledge of Git is uh, XKCD, that is, uh, try, to, try to push. If, the, if you have errors, put your uh, modification aside, reclone the repository, <laughs> and push again your modification. Uh, well, if you're like me, you know you can't mess up with PostgreSQL Git because you don't have permission to do it. So that's great. And what you have to know is Git clone, quite obvious, Git pull to get new version, and Git div to create a patch. There is an entire wiki page uh, that you should read about Git use in PostgreSQL context. And if you want to show off how uh, wonderful you are, you can use git pull rebase. My patch. 
So first, what's a patch? According to Wikipedia, a patch is a piece of software designed to update a computer program or its supporting data to fix or improve it. So what's seeing it is it's to make it better. You don't want to make a patch to make it worse. But what you have to keep in mind is what you think is making better can be making it worse for another person. So you just have to uh, keep your mind open and hear different point of views. So what's the story? I have, uh, I already talked about my trust network and people I can share ideas uh, about. And I was discussing on, uh, discussing on Twitter with a friend. Where that friend is a developer, a Ruby developer, and I trade uh, PostgreSQL advices against Ruby advices. And he was trying to create, uh, to add a constraint to his table. And I say, uh, okay, uh, he, he couldn't find the correct syntax. I say, okay, let's see the documentation. And that's where I found that the documentation was missing the, the constraint description section. So uh, we found it in the create table. He was able to do it uh, without problem. But I discussed with a colleague and he told me, oh yeah, I know, for years, it's really boring. I say, hey, what were you doing? <laughs> so I first did a bug reporting in the documentation. Uh, at the bottom of every page of the documentation, you have a bug form, uh, 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 a link to the, to the form, where you can submit a bug <laughs> in the documentation. And then it was Vaso. I was in Europe in uh, a conf talk. And I was literally uh, surrounded by gurus uh, of PostgreSQL, and I said, maybe I should ask some help and fix it myself. And that's what I did. So uh, the missing section was about table constraint in the synopsis uh, of Elter table. And first, I had to git clone the repository, and then I had to build PostgreSQL from source code. Then I had to build documentation because my modification was about documentation. And uh, I copy past the missing section from the create table to the alter table. And then I had to rebuild documentation from source code. So uh, the most difficult was to find where I should change, uh, make my modification. So, if you want to find that, I, I assure you that grep is your friend, but you have to find the, the right keyword. You can, of course, ask around, and you will find answer. And you can think a little, because if you see, the page was, uh, the, the name of the page was SQL alter table, and when you uh, uh, explore the directory, you will find that there is an SRC directory under the, the doc directory, and then you will find a LGML directory. And I thought that the REST directory was a, a good guess for the SQL section. And then I found the alter table.sgml file. So it's a simple copy paste. I haven't done everything else, anything else. And then I had to create the patch with git diff. So you had to use uh, with context uh, to create the, the, the git diff. There is an entire uh, wiki, wiki page about how to create clean patches. Read it. It's really important. And there is a great section about formatting your git diff output. But should be done. I couldn't make it. But then I found in the archive that even the best, the best men don't follow instructions because Robert has used a completely different and simpler way of creating patches. Uh, that's git div pipe filter div with format context. And so I did it that way. What about context? So the differences between git div and git, uh, without context and bit, git div with context is first indentation is uh, 
is uh, right in the git div with context, and second, the line number are uh, re uh, absolute and not relative. So uh, that's my, how I created the patch. So uh, there is no naming convention for your patch, but your patch name needs to be understandable and linked to your modification. You can't create the unicorn VR patch. Uh, it would be, uh, you can, of course, but I'm not sure it would be accurate. And it should be unique that you have to version your patch because I'm sure you will have feedbacks and you would have to change it. So uh, don't uh, use the same name for your different version of your patch. And here is my submission. You can use uh, the submitting a patch wiki page that helps with uh, the steps and the question you have to, to ask yourself before submitting a patch. And the result was, uh, okay, it's great, but in that page, there is another section missing. Maybe you could uh, re uh, add it to your patch. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a Sunday. Uh, I opened my laptop, I make the changes, and I go to my uh, mail account and found that someone else had already corrected it. Uh, it's pretty quick. I, I hadn't had time to, to make it. So, okay, it's for the best because uh, it's great uh, to have people uh, being concerned about that. And then I had totally uh, forgotten to register my patch for Commit Fest. Uh, but I was giving this very comf talk in FOSDEM in Brussels in February. And Stephen uh, knows about uh, it, and he registered for me uh, my patch on the Comic Fest of January. So here it was. And then another section was missing. But uh, I'm, uh, I was really surprised because I had read all the patch really uh, carefully, and, and I, I hadn't seen it. Uh, no, no, it's not that. There was a problem, it couldn't apply. It's not here. Uh, so it was changed, and there, there was an, a third section miss, missing. And it was uh, again changed by uh, Amit. And then it was ready for committer. And it was committed on January. And I can die. Uh, well, as obviously I won't die today, I decided to learn something. The first thing I learned is anyone can help. It's not difficult. The, your worst enemy in this is you, because you think you're not worth it, but you are. Uh, in the PostgreSQL community, you can ask for help. Every, uh, you will find answers. People are really welcoming and nice and you can ask for help. For help. Uh, it's okay to have multiple refactoring. Uh, it's quite always the case about patches, so it's okay. It doesn't mean uh, you suck. It just means, okay, can you make it a little better? Be, uh, better? And uh, what I learned too is before submitting a patch, it's better to talk with the community on uh, the hacker list to have other point of view. Uh, because uh, after that, there was a discussion about, uh, yes, now that section is in creatable and untotable, but when we have to change, we have to change uh, twice. So maybe we could have just added a link and it would have been, be have been better, but the community has decided to, to uh, just add a section. But uh, it's better to ask the community before and to talk uh, and have uh, gather different point of view, and then you can write your patch. What's next? Uh, I've been correcting some spelling errors, in, spelling errors in French translation. I don't know if you know some French people, but spelling errors are like crime for us. 
So uh, I did it, and uh, I've been studying the code, how it was st structured. I've been observing uh, commit fest, reviewing in commit fest. In, in March, I wanted to uh, join the commit fest, and when I uh, arrived, uh, it was the 10th of March, something like that, and I've seen that every, uh, every easy patch was already reviewed, uh, had already a reviewer. So I, I think, okay, the, what's left, it's not my level. I can't review those patches. Next time, I'll go early to uh, subscribe as a reviewer on patch, easy patches. But I was told I was wrong because it's okay to have multiple reviewer on the same code. So you, you have your point of view, it's unique, and you, you can uh, give it to the community. And uh, it's not a problem to have multiple reviewers for the same patch. And I've proposed ConfTalk, uh, like that one, and I had other topics. And I've been told that I had to submit a lot to be accepted, but uh, I had a problem uh, that I was accepted each time I proposed. So now I have a lot of control to do, and it took uh, a lot of time, so I don't have a lot of time to uh, uh, go into Postgres code, but I, I stopped submitting, so now I will have a, a little more time. Okay, so now it's about you, how you can help. Uh, I did some rating about contribution. It's only my view, my point of view, and uh, I'd be glad to have your feedback if you disagree. I'd like to have your feedback if you agree, but it, it won't be so, uh, so good for me. I, I like people disagreeing with me. So first, the first uh, contributor is uh, the one that uses Postgres but using Postgres, I, I said, is not enough to contribute to PostgreSQL. You are in the community, but you're not contributing. If you want to contribute, you have to share your experience, and you have to, uh, so sharing your experience can be answering, answering others' questions, but it can be a writing blog post, etc. Uh, so, uh, as you're here, in a conf talk, I'm sure you will discuss with other people, so you're already contributing as a one-star contributor, and that's great. Then there are great contributors. Great contributors are uh, helping organizing user group meetups or events, and they, uh, uh, and they can invest time or money in PostgreSQL associations. So that's the second star level, and the third star level, the super contributor, is about reporting bugs, creating patches, and reviewing patches. So if you want to uh, become a third star contributor, you, you'll find it really easy. You can just change uh, misspelling in a comment in PostgreSQL code, and you'll be a third star contributor. That's great. So what I want you to remind about that story is I'm, not ge I'm no genius. You can all do what I've done. You've seen it. it's not so complicated. So uh, as you're already a level one contributor, you can upgrade, and that's great. If you still don't know how to help of your, if you're afraid to mess things up, you can ask for mentoring. You will, people will uh, answer you and they're really welcoming and you, there's no problem in helping people uh, uh, going into the code and so on. The second one I want, uh, the second thought I want you to, under, to understand, it's really anyone can patch. It's not difficult. It's, men, it's even quite easy, and uh, you're welcome to do it. And now, you can just join. I wanted to thank uh, my guru mentors, Dimitri, Greg, Vic, Robert, Alvaro, because I took some of their patience and time. 
and I'm open to any questions, and I will be around if you want a private question. Okay, so no question. Uh, yeah? Uh, one small comment. We just recently abandoned the requirement that patches be in context of format. Uh, yeah, I've seen it uh, this morning. Right. <laughs> but I haven't changed my... Uh, I haven't changed my uh, my slide, but uh, yeah, I've seen it this morning. Yeah, it's very recent. <laughs> well, behind the Postgres, the, the core file is the project. There is a plethora of other projects around the project that need uh, contributions as well. Uh, JDC, everybody else? <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> yes, of course, there are, there are other projects around that can... Uh, can make with uh, some more help, uh, of course. And it's helped Postgres too. So, thank you. <laughs>